Welcome to Go Power Cats 2020 Signing Day Show. I am Ryan Gilbert. Today here we'll be talking with Jake Rubley, Andrew Langang, and some other athletes who have signed their letter of intent to play football at Kansas State University. We'll also be hearing from K-State head coach Chris Kleiman, getting his thoughts and opinions on the signees. But first, let's head out to Ryan Wallace, who is standing by with Jake Rubley. Pleasure to be joined by Jake Rubley. Uh, I think it's safe to say probably the star of this class, at least if you talk to uh, the subscribers here at gopowercat.com. Jake, you're, you're kind of the face of this class. Uh, one of the first commitments um, that Chris Kleiman was able to get, but I want to start a little bit with high school for a moment. Um, for those that are unaware, you transfer from Colorado to Iowa um, pre COVID or pre the, the COVID season here, because um, for a while there, it didn't look like Colorado was going to have high school football this yeah. year. But why Iowa and why um, West Des Moines Valley to begin your senior year? Um, so, yeah, when we kind of got word that Colorado was not going to have a season, um, my dad came to me and he was like, well, you want to play? And immediately, without even thinking about it, I was like, yes, I want to play. And he's like, well, the best man at my wedding. Uh, so my dad actually grew up in Iowa. He grew up in Davenport. Um, and so his best man at his wedding, Ryan Cooley, is a coach at West Des Moines Valley High School. Uh, he's a D-line coach, great program. They've won like five state championships. They're always a top four team. And he was like, uh, we'd love to have him. And my dad, you know, they kind of talked about it. And he asked me and I was like, well, let's just go check it out. Um, and then my dad was also trying to start his business out here to kind of like expand his business. So it was a great fit for both of us. So I could play my dad could run his business. It could be kind of a one-two punch kind of going thing. Um, and we went out and I, it was great. I mean, great fit. I love being with the guys. Coach Swenson's a great coach. and. It was great to play out here for a little bit, and it was, it was fun. Was the living situation different for you? Because, I mean, obviously it's a new school, but then, you know, it sounds like your mom wasn't with you or anything like that. I mean, it was – did it take a while to get to get used to? Yeah, it was a little weird. Uh, just, I mean, kind of made you grow up fast. I mean, my mom, she would kind of come in like she, – she'd be in and out a lot, same as my dad would be too. So it was kind of like weird. Like sometimes you wouldn't have anyone here, and sometimes there would be a full house here. So – it was weird that way, but I mean, made the most of it. It was, it was fun. As you said, uh, kind of a good preparation um, for, for college life a little bit. Um, <laughs> now, what's weird is, is you end up playing a couple games, and then the Iowa Athletics Association comes in and, in a cruel way, um, decides that you're ineligible for the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, does, let me ask you this. Does the time off um, where you're not able to play as a senior – in hindsight now, did, do you think that that maybe hurt you in terms of preparation for K-State, or in a way did it help you that you're just able to say, okay, high school's over now, I'm going to focus on me, I'm going to focus on K-State? Yeah, I was kind of – that's a good question because I kind of looked at it both ways. Um, when I was playing, I mean, it was great coming in here and learning the offense and learning a brand-new scheme with brand-new coaches, and that's what I'm going to have to do at K-State early in the spring too. Um, so it was great to, you know – get chemistry with these guys, build relationships with these guys, and go to war for three weeks when I was only here for two and a half weeks. And then three weeks later, I'm playing a football game. Uh, it was unbelievable in that way. But now that I'm looking at it, um, you know, there's always the what ifs. Like, what if I got hurt? What if I did this? And you know, I wasn't able to play in the spring at K-State. So there could have been like an injury or something that went on um, that would have prevented me to play and furthering my kind of – my springtime in Kansas State, that would have been a huge waste of time. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I was kind of got to work after that when they called me ineligible. You know, I, I was lifting every day. I was throwing every day. I was still practicing. So that was good. I got that. I just wasn't playing. Um, so I was throwing every day. I was lifting every day. And I, I just treated it like I was go, getting ready for college. So it, it was it was actually right. not bad. Now, when I've had a chance to talk with other guys in this commitment class, literally almost every single commitment that I've spoken to says your name when I ask about leadership, about who's taking the reins of this class. First off, I guess, two-part question. Do you agree that you feel like you're the leader in this class? And where, where does that leadership stem from? I mean, I think since I'm one of the first commits in this class, you know, that's kind of that initial start. Uh, I kind of know everyone and everyone that joins, I kind of first want to welcome them in. Um, in this, I mean, a quarterback, I guess, kind of gets the stereotype of being a leader. And I think I try to just make everyone be comfortable in the uh, 
in the class itself and make sure everyone is friends with each other. And I, uh, sorry, <laughs> no. So as a quarterback, I mean, you just got to be a leader. And I think that being that leadership role carries on the season um, and players. And I just want to get out there that, I mean, I'm for, I'm all for this class and all for these guys. With this class, how, how close has it gotten? I mean, I know that, I don't know if it's the players that set this up or if it's coach Bratt that always sets up that, uh, that kind of group chat that you guys are in, yeah. but um, you know, how close has the group gotten and, and kind of give the fans an idea of what the conversations are like between you guys um, throughout the year. <laughs> no, they, we've got, I think we've gotten real close throughout this whole year. Um, going back from COVID, we were talking the entire time. I mean, there was times we were up till like 3 a.m. playing Call of Duty and, and like in lobbies and stuff. Um, and we got like fantasy football going on, always talking crap. They're like, I beat your team, like, you beat all this stuff. I'm actually in the playoffs big week. Uh, yeah, my team's in the mid playoffs, which is huge. But um, yeah, no, so we just kind of, we've become real close over this period and we've gone through highs and lows as a class. I mean, I think we're watching this team now at K-State play and we're like, look, we can – we got to go in there. We got to be leaders in our class and we got to go, go work hard because, you know, we got to go earn our spot and help this team out. So if you're the leader then of, of this class per se, who is kind of the, the class clown or maybe the personality of the group? <laughs> I would, I would probably say Braden Wood. Uh, Braden Wood's always been that way, no matter what. He's just a class clown everywhere. Uh, RJ is one of those guys too. RJ's. He's funny. And, uh, he's, you know, they, they're, 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 when you get them two in a room together, they're, they're pretty funny to listen to. And you and Braden obviously go way back, um, I believe, for, from your Colorado days too. Um, I wanted to ask you, since you kind of touched on with quarterback, you know, you, you're kind of expected to be a leader. How about pressure? Um, does quarterback prepare you to handle uh, the immense amount of hype and attention and, and, do you feel it? I mean, do you know every day when you go out there that kind of eyes are on you? How have you learned to handle being this major hyped recruit and, and kind of, as I said, to, to kick off this interview, the star of this class? Yeah, I mean, going off that, um, just kind of pressure, it's, it's kind of weird. You don't really feel it. I guess I kind of turn it off. My dad always says, he's like, playing quarterback, there's the lowest lows and the highest highs. And he's like, you never want to be on the lowest low or you never be one of the highest highs. You always want to stay right in the middle. Because every time you're confident, cool, call, cool, cool, calm, and collective is when you play the best. If you're too low and you're trying to try too hard, you'll always play bad. And if you're too high on yourself, then you get cocky and then you'll start playing bad. And so you just kind of block out the side noise and you just kind of go bury your head down and get to work. I was going to say, what, what is kind of the Jake Rubley secret to that? You know, is it, is it kind of staying off social media? I mean, do you allow yourself to read the headlines or um, are you just wired in a way where you just, you might read it, but it just doesn't even really cross your mind, I guess. Yeah. I, I'm not really a big social media guy. I'm, me personally. I mean, I'm on Twitter a little bit and I just kind of tweet about a lot of K-State stuff. Um, but I guess I kind of just block it out. I mean, I kind of just, outside noise in my mind it's like if you're not trying to help me out then I'm just gonna block you out you know you're just I don't need that in my life you know kind of thing and I guess I just the outside noise doesn't really get to me personally it's more internally with my teammates that I try to build up and if it's all about confidence if you're confident then the pressure will relieve because you start playing better and K-State was obviously one of the schools that you visited as well um you know when it did come time to make a decision um, did that visit stick out in, in your brain? Was there something about that visit that, that really helped propel K-State or was there um, other, other factors involved besides just that visit? Yeah, no, just the people in K-State are unbelievable. You know, the people surrounding, everyone's heartwarming. They're unbelievable types of people. And I really love this coaching staff that really kind of drew me to K-State. I took a visit and I was like, wow, I, I really like these people. And I took another visit on game day and I was like, I can really see myself. And it kind of came down to the end of the season. It was like November-ish, and I was like, all right, I want to commit by New Year's. And I was like, you know, people were like, ah, oh, yeah, K-State. But I'm like, I just can't get this K-State thing out of my head. I'm like, they've, they're building something there, and I, I love the people there, and I just I, can't, I wanted to play for them. And so for the record, it did come down. Was it K-State, Colorado, and LSU? Or yes, were the, the, those were the top three? I just, yes, wanted, to, I just wanted to get that out. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I, that, that I knew that those were the three, but 
Um, Colin Klein, I think, was a guy that, if I remember correctly, was recruiting you as a freshman. Yeah. Um, how how important was that um, to to you picking K State that there's a guy that you've known since the ninth grade that you've developed this relationship with? No, especially with Coach Snyder, you know, retiring and we're getting Coach Klein. And you know, as like a recruit, you're like, ah, oh, I mean, whole new coaching staff. That means I have to build a whole new relationship. But having Coach Klein stay and him having me rec- or recruiting me since freshman year, I we built that relationship for four four years now. So it was like. I, it was picked up where we left off. You know, I didn't really have to rebuild a relationship with that coaching staff. And that, that was a huge plus. And, and then I came in and met Coach Kleiman and Coach Mess, and I was like, wow, I, I, really, I really like these people. With Coach Mess um, and the offense that he runs, as, as a quarterback, what's your opinion of it? What, what do you like so much about this offense where you said, I, I want to be a part of that? I, I just love the way he – the different – I mean, his offense is – He'll spread it out. He'll go five wide, or he'll pack the box and bring three tight ends. And he's got every tight, every I mean, everything he does is basically all football into one offense, which as a quarterback is huge. You know, you're not always just running these spread offenses, or you're not just running the ball every play. You know, so it, it's as and I want to you know hopefully one day play in the NFL. And as an NFL football player, this is the type of offense you run. You got to run everything to beat these defenses, and that's exactly what Coach Mess does. Now, this is an interesting question that I've, I've really wanted to ask you in particular was, you know, some guys, some recruits might see Skylar Thompson, um, who, you know, may return now, and knowing that Will Howard is kind of there and think, yeah, that's not for me, you know. Did the depth chart and, and competition ever cross your mind, you know, with those two guys? Uh, not really. I mean, you know, you have to – I mean, yeah, competition's there, but I, I love competition, you know. I mean, I know Skyler's been an unbelievable quarterback. I mean, he's played his butt off his, his entire time at K-State. And, I mean, going in, I, I, lo- I love competition. I kind of bred for it. Um, and I, I can't wait to compete. I love doing it. That's kind of what keeps me going every day. Do you have a relationship with either of those two quarterbacks just yet? Uh, no, I don't think I've ever – I think I've talked to Skyler a little bit when I took my game day uh visit and we were talked for a little, just small a little brief time awesome guy it seems like i haven't i haven't met will yet okay um you're gonna be an early enrollee uh, i'm curious kind of what goals do you have set for yourself n- not just for a, a career but maybe from year one to to kind of year four year five even maybe um what what are jake rubley's career goals at k-state I want to win a Big 12 championship, but that's my first goal. You know, I want to get with this class and I want to build something great and win a Big 12 championship. I mean, the last guy to do it was Coach Klein, um, and I want to fill those shoes. You know, hey, those are those are really big shoes to fill, but I, I want to do it. That, that's kind of my goals. And then I just want to, you know, I want to be a great person in this town and this city and this and the coaching staff and this team. So, How many games were you able to watch in the 2020 year? And um, I guess what – even though maybe it didn't finish the way that you would like to, or, or even the guys that are on the team now would have liked to, um, what kind of things really stood out that you kind of said, I think we can build on that? Well, I watched every game this year um, through and through. And in the, earlier in the season, we ranked, what was it, 17th, I think, is the highest we got to. Um, yeah, some guys were voting them eight. <laughs> yeah. No, we were at 17, and, I mean, we had a lot of injuries. We had a lot of COVID things, and, you know, we had some guys transfer. So we we were a seventh ranked seventh team in the beginning of the season. And, you know, as the season goes, unfortunate things happen sometimes where injuries and different things happen. So, I mean, the foundation is there for a really good ball club. Uh, we just got to finish this year. That's a big thing. The idea of you in a backfield with Deuce Vaughn, uh, are you pumped about that? Deuce is unbelievable. That I I can't wait to play with Deuce. He's he's unbelievable. He's in my opinion he's top five running back in the country right now. How about uh, you know speaking of dynamic players? I uh, want to go back to this class real quick as we kind of round things out on early signing day. Um, is there a player in this class? Um, let's let's count Braden out because I know you know Braden well. But is there a player in this class that you're personally excited about? Maybe you've seen some film of them or just know what they can do that that you're really ready to see them in purple beside you. Yeah, both the receivers come in this class, Brendan Hawkins and uh, RJ Garcia. Those guys, I can't wait to build chemistry with them right right off the bat as soon as they get here in the summer. 
Uh, they lights out speed, lights out hands. They looks like they run run routes very well, and they understand the game very very well. Uh, they're very smart kids, and I think progressively through the next four years of our lives, we're going to be very 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 good together. Okay, let's have some fun with these last two here, Jake. Um, tell us something that we might not know about the recruiting process. Um, you know. It, Maybe it deals with Coach Kleiman. You know, maybe it's, it's something fun that you have with, with your future head coach. Maybe it's just something about the process that fans don't know. Is there anything funny, interesting that stands out through the three years that you've been recruited? That's, that's interesting. That's an interesting question. Um, shoot. I mean, it's just – it's crazy what colleges will do for a kid to come to their school is all I have to say. I mean <laughs> – it, it is, it, especially as a quarterback, I think quarterbacks are the worst of it because, you know, they're always recruited as freshmen. I mean, I got my first offer when I was they, I was still a freshman at the time. And ever since then, it's – and my dad was the head coach of my team. So they'd call my dad, and then my dad would call me to call them to call them to have phone calls. And there's time – there was a time um, going to school where I didn't go to school. There was coaches coming in every single day, and I would have to meet with them for about an hour. We'd have a conversation. And then my dad would be like, oh, wait, uh, there's a new coach in here. We, you have to – there was a time for like three weeks I didn't go to school. Um, and you're always coming in. They're always coming to watch you throw. And it's just, it's just mayhem, especially in the springtime when the recruiting really picks up. Um, it, it gets a little hectic. <laughs> and so it was nice to get that over with. Um, yeah. Was K-State was a breath of fresh air in, in some regard? I've, I've heard stories that the conversations with Coach Kleiman and his staff are different when you kind of have that uh, car wash style coaching thing go through that, that their conversations seem to stick out. Is that, is that true? Yeah. They, they don't really pitch the school, which I've always kind of understood. Every team's like, Oh, we're getting this. We're getting that. We're getting this. We have this, we have that, we have this. If they never really pitch the school, they always just kind of pitch the people. And that was really cool to see. They're like, yeah, we, we have this person here. We have that person here. We, we're going to build something great, which they always said to me. And that really stuck out. All right, last one for you, Jake. And I don't know if fans know this, um, but this is going to be a fun one. Manhattan in the last couple of years has hosted the Gronkowskis, obviously. You know, they've already come through um, to see Glenn Gronkowski play. What are the chances, you know, what are the odds of the percentage that you would put on K-State getting a visit from Frank and Sly Stallone who are actually related to you? That would be um... – I, I think that could definitely happen. I mean, if we really push that argument, I mean, I know my uncle's definitely wanted to come watch me play many times, and his his wife and his daughters have been my biggest supporters ever. Uh, he has too. I mean, they've been unbelievable supporters, and I think we could definitely make it happen. We're going to hold you to that, Jake. You, Let's do you it. Put, you've put it on the record now. We're going to hold you to it. Uh, Jake Rubley here on early signing day at gopowercat.com. Jake, Jake, thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. GoPowerCat.com here with Crew Jackson, a 2020 safety out of Queen Creek, Arizona. Crew, first of all, how are you doing today? And thanks so much for taking time with us. Oh, I'm doing great. How are you guys doing over there? Doing good. Appreciate you asking. Um, first question for you. Like I said, you're from Arizona. So what made you want to come out to the Midwest and play football? Uh, you know, I think, you know, the location, of course, it's it's a it matters, I think, in choosing a, a program. But Honestly, I think it was, you know, Kansas State and the coaches and everyone there, I think they were, they were enough, you know, to, you know, I think it's a good thing actually to pull me out of my comfort zone, move states, you know, move environments, you know, experience something new. What coaches um, at K-State have you been in talking with the most? Um, I'd say, I mean, I, I think I talked with most of the defensive staff uh, quite a bit, but two, two of the coaches I talked with a lot are, uh, would have to be, Probably Coach Standard, Coach Tui, and uh, Coach Klanderman. I talked to a lot of those three. What have you – have you kind of gotten a role as to what your role might be? Um, I guess a sense of what your role might be at Kansas State. You know, kind of what do they like in your game? What do – what do they see in you? What are your talents and stuff like that? Um, I think I think one of the big things that they saw was, you know, you know, given, you know, my length and height, that my, my ability to tackle – oh, I'm sorry my ability to tackle so I think you know a role I think I'll be you know feeling playing the role as sort of you know a linebacker uh when I when I get to Kansas State do you have any good relationships with um any of the commitments in your class so far I'm sure you guys probably have a group message or something going like that but uh 
Is there anyone that you're really clicking with? Maybe someone on the defensive side of the football, a safety, someone like that? Um, yeah, I mean, we have that group chat. I don't think, you know, there's anyone specific. I think I, I've been able to form a, a connection with, with most all the guys in the, the group chat, you know, even especially the, the defensive guys. So let's go back to this just a little bit. What exactly was it that kind of separated K-State out from the other schools that you had offers from, like like Iowa State, um, Virginia, Pittsburgh, for example? Uh, I think I think it's just the way – I really like the way that the uh, the coaches and the staff do things here at K-State. I think uh, I think it's just a really good fit for me, you know, not just the football aspect of things, but, you know, the way they're, they're going to, you know, help me as just a person uh, rather than just a football player. When it's all said and done, when you graduate from Kansas State, what do you want to look back on and say that you accomplished? What goals do you kind of want to get done, you know, day in, day out? What do you what do you kind of want to get done at K-State? Uh, I, you know, I, I want to be able to, to get there, you know, I think just work hard every day and, you know, obviously, you know, become become a better football player, become the best that I can be. And, and then with schooling, just, you know, study hard and make sure I, you know, doing the best I can and everything with school and football and you know just having having fun even too you know I think it's a important thing and you know to have a a, a balance of, of these things and I think just to have a good experience overall and for college. You talked about school there well, what is your kind of do you have a major picked out yet and what are your kind of career aspirations um, outside of football? Um, so I don't have a, a specific uh, career picked out yet or even major but I'm uh, I'm leaning towards more, you know, a, a STEM uh, major if still trying to narrow it down from there. So you've got, what, a matter of months now, I guess, before you come out to Manhattan. What are you trying to do? I know times are tough right now. You can't get out and do everything. Um, but what are you trying to do to improve your game right now? You're in the weight room, doing drills, watching film. What is it that you're doing right now? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, I've you know, been in the weight room already since this since the season ended and you know, getting out to parks or wherever I can with, you know, some teammates and, you know, some coaches if I can and just, you know, working on what I can with the, the speed and explosiveness and, you know, strength overall. So have you ever been to Manhattan? Uh, no, I haven't. Not yet. How tough was it, you know, to make that decision to go to a college you've never been and you already committed and you're set to come? How, how hard was that? You know, I think I think it was a little a little tough, but I think given the circumstances with you know everything going on with Corona and everything, uh, I was I realized you know at a certain point that I was gonna have to you know make this decision without being able to you know see everything that I, you know I may have wanted to, but I was I was given you know plenty of virtual tours and been able to see so many of the facilities and even the campus through like FaceTime, Zoom calls and stuff like this. So I think. You know, I was still able to get a, a good a good view without having to visit uh, to make my decision. Is there anyone out there um, that's kind of a role model to you or someone who you kind of like to model your game after that's, you know, maybe a college player, um, an NFL player, anyone like that? Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I, I haven't thought about that. I haven't thought about anyone specifically, you know, I just – I just try to, you know, play my game and do what I can to, you know, be, be the best, be the best I can be. Gotcha. Last thing for you, man. Um, have you been keeping up with K-State? I know they kind of had a, a tough end to the season, but they had, you know, a hot 4-0 start um, to conference play. What are your, your thoughts on just watching those guys? Um, a good amount of them will be back next season to play with you. What are your takeaways from just watching them on TV and stuff? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually really excited, you know, being able to watch them on TV, knowing, you know, that I'm going to be able to play with most of these guys. I think that was a really exciting thing for me. And, you know, they had a, a great start to the season. I think, I think, you know, even with this, even with the rough ending, I think that K-State is, is a great football program. And I think, uh, you know, that I get there. Once I get there, I think that I'm going to be, able, I mean, we're going to be able to, you know, I hope, hopefully I'm going to be able to, you know, help out, make a difference. And I think that, K-State's going to be able to be a great football program. I mean, they already are. I think it's they're only improving from here. All right, Crew Jackson, a 2020 safety from Queen Creek, Arizona. We appreciate you, Crew, taking time with us, and best of luck to you moving forward, man. Thank you. It's great being here. Joined now by Kansas State signee, 
Marvin Martin. Um, first off, Marvin, let's start uh, way back in Mississippi, Vicksburg. Uh, explain to uh, the, the K-State Nation about uh, how you made the decision to transfer hit your senior year uh, to compete in, in Dallas. Hello. Well, it started off by uh, we had three head coaches in the last three years, so it was unstable. So, um, yeah, we were hearing about Trinity on football, and so we decided to move out and play for Trinity. Now, when you get to Trinity, um, what was it about that program that, that kind of made you drawn to it, uh, and how much did Deion Sanders play into your decision to, to join that program? It was like that. It was it was hard because everybody everybody competed every day, so it went easy. And uh, with dealing with Cole Prime, he really didn't deal with defense as much, so I really didn't hear much too much coaching from him. I was, you know, he always focused on the offense. Did you learn anything from him? I mean, I know you said he was mainly on offense, but did he ever come and maybe after practice or before practice just give you some pointers or anything like that? Yeah, you know, he'll come give you a few pointers here and there, but it wasn't nothing too major. What's that like playing on the same team as Deion Sanders? What's he like as a coach? He's a hard coach. <laughs> <laughs> so the guys at Jackson State are in for something special then? Oh, yeah. Well, with your recruitment, um, you were a guy that really seemed like you exploded um, when you got on the scene at that Under Armour camp. Did you feel like you had a really good day at that Under Armour camp? I mean, was that a, a special day of testing and competing for you? Yeah, it was a it was an okay day, but I ain't had the numbers I wanted. But yeah, it was okay. It was obviously very good in the eyes of the twenty four seven scouts, and uh, it wasn't too long after that you end up at Trinity and Boston College comes knocking. Um, did you know anything about Boston College when they offered, and and what made you commit to them initially? I knew a little bit, but like I committed because it was like it was a I feel like it was gonna be the best place for me to go. How long, not, how long after you committed to Boston College would you say K-State started knocking on your door? About, i say, a good month, about a month. Were you, right away, were you intrigued by K-State, or did it take a couple conversations for you to say, hmm, this, this is a program I'm interested in? It, it took, i say it took a couple of um, conversations. With Coach Klanderman, I know he was one of the ones that kind of reached out to you initially and kind of became your lead recruiter. What did you like so much about Coach Klanderman? Because it seemed like you guys clicked right away. Yeah, he was he was truthful all the time, you know. He talked to me every day, and he showed me that he wanted me to come to Kansas State. What kind of things was Coach Klanderman and K-State able to do virtually for you that maybe was different than some other schools? I mean, did you feel like you got shown around campus and got to see some things from afar since you weren't able to, to go to campus? Uh, yeah, so they took me to the locker room where they eat at, the stadium. They went. They took me on a whole virtual tour, tour through the um, campus or the school. How much did the depth chart play into your decision with K-State? Um, did Coach Klanderman talk a little bit about the need for a nickel and the need for a safety? No, no, so that – no, we never like come up in a conversation, really. That's interesting, though, because they were still able to land you even without kind of pitching instant playing time and anything like that. Does that, does that say something about that program that, you know, they're able to get you without saying – making a lot of promises? Yeah, I can say it. It, was, it just – I feel like it's going to be a great program for me, the way they, the way they run their defense. When you talk about their defense – where specifically do they want to play you? Because, you know, talking to Coach Hart at your high school, you're a guy that can play corner, linebacker, safety. Uh, I mean, can you run kicks back too? No, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, where, where do you see yourself fitting in on the defense, though? At the nickel position. What makes you a good nickelback? Because I can cover. I'm, kind of, I'm big and strong. I can cover the tight end. And I can also tackle. When it comes to tackling, I can also tell. Physically, um, where are you now as far as height and weight? And do you want to get any bigger? Or do you feel like you're at a good spot right now with playing the nickel? Well, I'm six, I'm six foot, 175. And I, I know I got to get bigger to be there, play there in that position. Your mindset when we watch you on film, you're violent. 
you know, you're aggressive. Um, and, and you get into the backfield as well for, for a defensive back. Is there anybody that you kind of model your game after? Because I've talked to guys and you, you have a little bit of Jamal Adams in you from the sense that you tackle well, you cover well. I mean, is there a guy that, that you model your game after? Uh, yeah, I say him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like I watch Jamal? him a lot. Yeah. Have you ever trained with anybody back home? You know, I know you've got a trainer back in Mississippi that is trained with uh, some NFL guys. I mean, have you soaked up any of that knowledge throughout the years? No, nah, I normally like work out by myself, so nah, I ain't really doing any of that. What excites you most about Kansas State? Obviously, you know, didn't have quite the season that they were hoping for this year, but what do you see with the future of the Wildcat program? No, uh, the fan base is just crazy. <laughs> yeah, the fan base is crazy. And, uh, yeah, that's all I can say, the fan base. How excited are you just to get up there and, and finally see the campus and, and see the facilities, see the locker room, put a jersey on, um, since you haven't been able to do that? Very excited. <laughs> and one last thing, you know, when I talk about getting to campus, you're a guy that obviously I know K-State – was interested in you and you were interested in K-State for the opportunity to get up there early. Um, when did it become a priority for you to be an early graduate and get up on campus early? Since not great. So, so getting, getting yourself academically eligible has been something you've been working on for three, four years? Yes, sir. Uh, have you, you found a roommate yet? Do you know who you're going to be living with? No, sir. Uh -uh. Not yet. <laughs> you are going into this blind, man. Um, yeah. But you won't be the only one. You know, it's an odd year. Um, and so everybody's kind of dealing with COVID as, as it comes. But um, Marvin, last but not least, man, w what individual goal do you have set for yourself for next year? And um, what team goal do you have? Have you talked to these commits? What is the team goal um, for this 2021 class? Well, the team goal for the 2021 class is to uh, win the conference. Uh, one last question, uh, and it's a fun one, man. Um, do you have a nickname that fans can can call you, and what number do you hope to be wearing in purple? MJ. MJ? Yeah. How about a number? Do you know number your favorite number? One. There it is. All right. Well, you heard, it, you heard it here first from Marvin Martin signing with Kansas State on early signing day. Marvin, thank you so much for joining us on GoPowerCat.com. Let's now hear from K-State head coach Chris Kleiman as we get his thoughts and opinions on this 2021 recruiting class. Excited to uh, announce uh, 14 uh, young men that have signed onto our program and, and a 15th that we'll talk about uh, a little bit later on, but uh, um, really excited for our staff to be able to bring these uh, young men into the fold. Uh, it's been a challenging time, as, as we all know, and to think uh, how long we've been recruiting so many of these, uh, some of these players and the fact that uh, uh, none of them had an official visit, none of them we were able to go see at the school, none of them we were able to have a home visit with. Everything was done virtual. Everything was done via Zoom. Um, a few kids have been on campus maybe when they were juniors. Uh, which obviously helped us quite a bit uh, in the long run. Uh, but uh, I know there was uh, a, a handful of guys that uh, we don't believe have ever been on campus, even not even coming up on their own sometime in the summer or fall. And uh, what a challenge that is. And that's, that shows you um, the confidence that the, these young men and their families have in, in what we're doing here at Kansas State, uh, confidence in, in the relationships that they have been building with um, Taylor Bratt, the recruiting staff, the, the position coach, the recruiting coach, the, myself, the head coach, uh, that, um, that we were able to, to sign such a, such a quality class uh, in, uh, in, in the limited resources and limited time that we, we had face-to-face um, -face with these guys. So um, thrilled for these guys. It's a special day. Uh, I, I don't care what kind of pandemic year, all that other stuff. What a special day for these young men and their families uh, to know where they're going to college, um, to be able to be a part of the K-State family. Uh, we're excited because it's a, it's a great day for, for us at Kansas State to welcome these uh, young men and their families. And so we couldn't be more thrilled to, to have these guys. And we had a pretty good Zoom this morning with a number of them uh, and, and celebrated. 
uh, we did something different that we hadn't done. We had cameras kind of put up all over uh, veneer, weight room, outside my office, trophy area, um, offices, and, and uh, had a bunch of them on together uh, and started to build that bond with each other. Uh, and it was a pretty cool morning. One player in specific that jumps out at Chris Kleiman is Gardner Edgerton's athlete, Devontae Pritchard. Just somebody that jumps out at me um, that I was able to go see in, in person. I was able to go see Devontae Pritchard in person play uh, when he was a junior. And I thought right away, um, there's a kid that, that is a big 12 football player that uh, will come and will strike you. Uh, was a really good athlete on offense as well, but on defense is where we're going to play him. And Devontae was a kid that jumped out at me really quickly as a, of it's going to be a phenomenal big 12 defensive player next up let's hear what chris Kleiman has to say about rj garcia a really skillful wide receiver out of tampa florida uh rj is a, a really talented uh, player from berkeley prep and uh, his dad's a basketball coach so he's grown up in the in the coaching world and um uh, understands it really mature player he's put on uh, some added weight already had a good season for them uh, in his senior year uh, and he will be here in the summer, and we're excited about him, uh, as well as Brennan Hawkins is a, is a, a big body, is a 6'4 wide receiver that, that'll be here as well this summer. So, um, you know, we, we feel good about uh, adding two wide receivers. When Coach Kleiman was recruiting Devrin Weathers, he was not really sure where he would put him on the field, but after watching his tape over the last senior season, it's pretty clear and obvious where he'll fit as a Wildcat. Well, for starters, he comes from a tradition laden program, and uh, Web City's uh, been phenomenal for uh, decades and um, Devron was fun to watch because we didn't know to project him as a defensive back a linebacker uh, we knew he could be a running back and and so at his size and athleticism he's a phenomenal baseball player too but at his athleticism we said that we just got to get the kid in the program um, and uh, we wanted to we'll find wherever we can to to put him and then as you kept watching his senior tape unfold became more and more clear to us uh, that he's that big back that um, that's got great speed great elusiveness can run through arm tackles uh, that uh, we're excited to be able to to pair back there in the backfield and 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 utilize him there and be a great special teams player and um, I just think athletically when you have somebody with his skill set uh, and the ability to run and be physical like he is, he was going to be a can't miss and would help us somewhere. But we'll start him on at running back. Lastly, while K-State did sign 14 players from the 2021 class, Chris Kleiman did express his interest in utilizing the transfer portal. Yeah, well, we're going to have to a little bit, but we're still having conversations with seniors. Um, so we don't know where that's going to land with, with a handful of guys that uh, haven't made that decision, if they're going to come back or not. But uh, um, you know, we like everybody else will continue to tr try to help uh, build our roster and make sure that, um, you know, we're, we're equipped at, at all positions to be able to handle the tough Big 12 schedule for 2021. Uh, let's go out to Colorado now. We are joined by Braden Wood. Braden, how's it going today? Doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate you taking time with us. Let's get right to it. Um, I, I think the most, uh, I think fans would probably care most about your relationship with Jake Rubley. Let's we'll start with that. Um, overall, um, how is that relationship like? And, and, and what do you guys kind of have as far as a connection goes? So me and Rubley have been playing uh, youth ball since I think sixth grade. Um, played all the way up until, you know, high school. Um, you know, stayed in contact, you know, throughout our or his recruiting process, my recruiting process. Uh, we stayed close for the past, you know, six, seven years. Um, it's kind of kind of crazy how we kind of ended up on the same team. You know, you never would have thought, you know, two young bucks, uh, you know, playing in Colorado ends up on the same, you know, D1 team. You know, so we kind of had the kind of had the dream since we were little. Um, and now we're here. And it's it, it's crazy. You know, it's a crazy thing to, you know, be a part of. Um it's just crazy to think about. Um, but, you know, me and him, uh, his relate or me and him, uh, our relationship's really special, you know, just because, like I said, we've been playing youth ball um, and, you know, been building a relationship since. And he was kind of the n number one hardest recruiter on me um, he, since, you know, he committed early to K-State. And, you know, I was still kind of on the fence at the time. Um, so and he was kind of the hardest recruiter out of, you know, everybody, uh, everybody, you know, trying to get me to K-State, you know, trying to get the Colorado to case, uh, Kansas connection going on. So um, it's unreal uh, to kind of think about where we're at now. Um, just, you know, it's been great. Now, I, I understand there's a little story with the shirt when, when you decided to commit. Is that correct? 
Uh, yes, that is correct. What, what's the story behind this for those who don't know? Um, so for me, uh, we, I wanted to com uh, commit that summer and that was an official date that I've set up. Um, and my, I still wasn't, you know, hundred percent sure where I was at at the time. And so when I kind of made my mind that I'm going to Kansas state, you know, I didn't really have that much apparel because, you know, I was planning on, uh, going out there right before, you know, the pandemic really, you know, kind of hit, I was supposed to go out to a spring practice, you know, that's when I was getting all my gear and stuff like that. Kind of like an, you know, a normal, normal visit, you know, get your gear and everything. And so, uh, but you know, that all hit, didn't get a chance to get stuff. So we ordered a lot of Kansas state stuff when I kind of knew, you know, this is the place where I want to be. Um, I want to thank, I think maybe three weeks before. So we ordered a bunch of shirt. I ordered, you know, got the sweatshirt and everything. And it got back ordered because of COVID until the next week after I was planning on committing. Um, and I had a, a news channel wanted to, you know, do my recruitment live there. Um, so we kind of had a hard set date, you know, where I was going to do it. And I wasn't going to let, you know, a shirt, you know, you know, be the decision of why I'm pushing back my commitment date. So I, I called up Rubley and I was like, Hey, I, I need a shirt. I need a hat. I need something where I can, you know, commit with. And he's like, no worries. So my mom went down that day, got it, came back up. I wrapped up my uh, commitment video that day while my mom was going to get the shirt, came back up and 30 minutes later, you know, the whole unzip the, unzip the hoodie. And I revealed and I was committed to K-State. Well, let's switch gears here and, and talk about your game a little bit. For someone who's maybe never seen you play, what should we expect from you on the field? Um, what are your sort of strengths? And, you know, how, how does your game kind of roll? Um, you can expect a huge motor out of me, um, especially I've been starting uh, since I was a freshman in high school. Um, and I kind of had that mentality. I, had a, I wasn't the biggest kid, you know, throughout high school, at least my first two years. So I had to, you know, give myself an extra step over the other kids that, you know, are bigger, you know, stronger, faster. And that's where you'll see me, uh, wherever the ball is, I'm 100% going to the ball, you know, trying to stop it. You know, that's kind of how I am. That's kind of how I've been, you know, my whole football career. I'll have that extra step, you know. I'll make sure that guy in front of me, even though how tired I am, I will make sure I will beat the guy in front of me. You know, that's my – that's kind of my – hugest thing in my game, you know, that kind of resents the dominance and, you know, relentlessness. Um, I think it's a huge part of my game. But I think a, another kind of thing that makes me a little better than the next guy in front of me is uh, I think I'm well, well, well rounded in the, you know, film book, you know, uh, and just great football knowledge in general. Um, you know, I'll watch close to maybe four hours, five hours, six hours, you know, a game film a week. Uh, to see whoever I'm playing against, the tackles, the O linemen, whoever I'm going against, seeing tendencies, you know, wherever I can get that extra step uh, to be dominant and help my team, you know, win. That's what I'm going to do, and that's why I've been doing my whole entire, you know, high school career. And you know, it, it has showed off. You know, my junior year, I had over 116 tackles um, as a D lineman, which is unheard of. And you know, I think it has a lot to do with you know me getting in the film books, you know, me scouting the other team and just giving myself that extra step uh, to you know. Get, beat the other opponent, help my team out, get in that gap, you know, taking out double teams, triple teams, you know, putting myself in position for my linebackers or the other D linemen to make plays. Um, and that's kind of at least my other only huge, you know, team team person, the team, the team, the team is my head coach always, you know, kind of drilled in my head. I'm a huge team player and that kind of relates to my leadership. You know, I thought I had a great leadership. I've been a team captain for the past three years. <clears throat> Um, and I think I've been, a, I think I've been the leader of the defense for the past two. Um, and that kind of rallies around, you know, you know, me watching film, you know, me getting the best out of everybody in practice, you know, just picking everybody up uh, when they're down or just, you know, drilling their head, you know, if you're doing this wrong, you need to do that. Um, in the past, you know, four years, we've been maybe a one loss team, you know, we've been great in the regular season. Um, and that transitions to win games. So I think, you know, you can see definitely that, you know, translation or translating into, you know, trying to, you know, go in there and just win as many games as possible. Which coaches did you um, have good relationships with throughout your recruitment process? And then also what have they kind of, um, what have they told you they like about your game and stuff like that? Um, so most importantly, uh, Tui, you know, my position coach, um, he was kind of the biggest recruiter where I sat down and had the, you know, long, uh, lengthy conversations about, you know, uh, where he sees me playing at, uh, how he can see me or how the impact that he sees me on the field. Um, 
So, of course, he was probably the number one recruiter. And just because, you know, he's put so many guys in the league um, with all the schools he's been to, that was kind of a really eye-popper to me um, because everybody's end goal, I think, you know, when you go to the next level is to make the, to make the league. I think that's everybody's end goal there. Um, but, of course, uh, Coach Klein, a Colorado native, you know, recruits Colorado. He did a huge job, you know, coming into uh, see me sophomore, junior, freshman year, um, you know, kind of starting the relationship out uh, at a young age. Um, he did a great job, you know, since we have that Colorado connection, we can relate to a lot of things, um, especially with his experience here coming to Colorado, Kansas State, and now staying there for uh, – I think it was close to 16 years now. I'm not, not sure the exact number. Um, but, of course, the head coach, you know, Chris Kleiman, you know, had the huge, probably the biggest impact just because, you know, you know he's a defensive kind of minded guy, um, which I, I love. Um, and just to see what he did at North Dakota State and, you know, the translation to here, um, I think he set in stone a great path, uh, you know, just not for this class, but, you know, just for K-State in his future in general. Um, I think he has a great plan and he kind of, you know, explain to me a lot of the things he's trying to do. Um, and um, I'm 100%, you know, following it. I love what he, you know, is preaching to everybody else, the media, to us, um, which I'm excited about. Um, and then last, you know, Coach uh, Kleinerman, uh, you know, he kind of had, you know, this year's the new DC. Um, I didn't get to talk to him as much as I would like to. But still, you know, once he got in, got that DC job, we connected ever since. You know, we'll try to get together, you know, once a week, um, and talk, you know, football, you know, life and everything like that. And because that's going to be the main guy uh, besides Tui that you're going to be with. You know, that's your guy. That's the guy you're going to go to battle with. Um, that's the guy that's going to lead the troops. Um, but, you know, I think uh, K-State as a whole has been the best uh, – set of coaches that has recruited me and showed me the most love. And that's why I chose Kansas State, obviously. Um, they've done it like no other school has done it for me before. Or for me before and that's why I chose Kansas State. So you're, I understand that your college season, or pardon me, your high school season started late and ended early, correct? Yeah, so due to the pandemic, you know, we got uh, our high school season originally got canceled in the summer. Um, and then up till I think maybe mid September, it got you know reinstated. So we had less than two weeks to prepare for our first game. So how hard was that? I mean, just to I mean, you didn't get much football for your senior year. Obviously, I know you're busy in the weight room and stuff like that, um, and in watching film like you talked about. But how tough was that to not have a real senior season? Um, it was tough, but not tough at the same time. Just because I'm so grateful to have that senior season. You know, a week before it got reinstated, I was with my head coach writing up uh, kind of something to tell my team I wasn't going to be there with them uh, to play in the spring. And that was really hard on me uh, just because, you know, those, those are the kids I've been working with in the weight room, battling, you know, just seeing the growth that we've been through for the past four years. And a lot of those guys, especially this team this year, was very, you know, this is their first year starting varsity um, and see what the success that we had this year. Even though the weird, how weird the season was, it was it was remarkable, and I, I truly felt you know blessed to be able to play my senior season. But it, again, it was very very weird, um, just because you know it's a six game schedule, um, it was just all conference games, so um, with limited fans too, it was kind of weird seeing you know uh, we started out with maybe 175 total fans with both teams. Uh, you know, at the start of the season for home games, and then you can see those numbers kind of get slow or decrease slowly and slowly. By the end of our senior night on, the, on our last uh, regular season game, we only had our parents and the seniors. You're only allowed, you know, your mom or dad, your, you know, your grandfather and your mom, um, just something along those lines. And it was just weird because when they came down, uh, you know, on the field to, you know, do the whole senior night thing, you look up in the stands and there's no one there. Um, and that was a little – that was really what – it was kind of the weirdest thing the whole season. It was just kind of – it was kind of going back to kind of youth ball. You know, you're only playing, you know, in front of your parents, uh, grandparents and your family. Um, so it really kind of took me back to those kind of things because we weren't even allowed to have a, a locker room. You know, we were on the sidelines the whole entire time. During halftime, we would just go to the end zone and kind of kneel by the goalpost. So that was definitely a little weird. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm grateful to, you know, play the seven games. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, trade it for anything in the world. Uh, I had a great time, but again, it, it was a little weird. Also, with the <clears throat> excuse me, also with the with regards to the pandemic, you were originally supposed to go visit Manhattan back in March, correct? And then you ended up having to cancel that. And you were one of the few to actually catch a, a game live this season. 
as far as your signees go. Um, you're one of the few to do that. So how cool was it to finally get out, you know, out to Manhattan and, and really kind of explore campus and see what a game day can, can be like? It was amazing. Um, I'm not going to lie. I've been, I've been very grateful to see, you know, some of the top, uh, top teams in the country play. Um, and Kansas State as a whole in the community um, and, you know, the fan base is up there with any other team up in, in the country. Um, even though there was 25% capacity, uh, it was loud as can be. Um, everybody at the game was into it. They were cheering. They were going crazy. Um, people were recognizing me, which, which really kind of stood out to me and made me feel like, wow, this is, this is home. Um, and especially, you know, visiting the town, uh, you know, Aggieville, you know, the night before it was loud, crazy, you know, it was just a sea of purple everywhere. Um, everybody was in K-State gear. You only saw barely any KU fans because that, that was the game I attended was the KU uh, Kansas State game. And it was just a really cool experience. And I, I was ecstatic to go um, before. And that was my first time going there uh, to see Manhattan. And I was blown away. And that was kind of the, the day where I know, like, hey, I'm 100% in. You know, this is where I want to be for the next four to five years of my life. Um, and I, I can't think of a better place to play. You talked about Manhattan. You talked about the coaches, you know, all the environment, everything like that. But if you had to pinpoint, you know, one specific thing, um, that really did separate K-State from the other schools, what would that be? Ooh, that's a tough one, but I would definitely have to say the culture there. Um, the culture that uh, that the new coaching staff has brought into there um, and what they're setting, I think is going to be spectacular. Um, and especially, you know, this year and the amount of injuries they had, the amount of COVID issues they had and still been able to do what they did this year. Um, Cause you know, looking at it from a, you know, a just college football standpoint, you know, you look at them and they're like, oh, you know, they did, they did all right. But if you really know what happened and see what they had to deal with and the work they put in and the amount of, you know, adversity they had gone through, I, I, I couldn't be more proud to be, you know, a, a wildcat just because I know what the coaches have been doing. I know what the, you know, the young guys that they've been, you know, doing there and how many freshmen have been starting, you know, what the seniors have been able to go through. I know it's hard being a senior, you know, um, but they've had it gone through um, and just what they're, they're trying to do. And their biggest point is they're, you're going to become a better man than a football player at, K, at Kansas State. And I think that's the, the biggest point. You know, they're looking at the 40-year plan, not the four-year plan. Um, you know, seniors right now already have jobs, have internships, and it's because, you know, the culture that they're setting right there, you know. Of course, the league's the, the goal, but they're setting you up for the 40-year plan rather than the, the, the four-year plan. Apart from Rubley, of course, um, which of, of the fellow signees in your class have you developed a close relationship with? Um, besides Jake, obviously, uh, Devontae Pritchard. I love the dude. He's probably what he's probably the first or second that I'm closest to. Um, RJ, I love love him to death too. You know, we've we've had a great uh, relationship. We've got to get close, and then Gavin, we've we've gotten really close to. Um, Besides that, you know, oh, Chris, I can't forget kicker Chris, you know, uh, he's a great dude. Uh, uh, it was me and Gavin at the KU game. Uh, and then I saw Chris there too. So those only two besides Rubley that I saw in person and, you know, they're great dudes. And that's another reason why uh, I, I committed is just because you're bunch around great dudes. If you're at a school and you don't like the commits there, those are the guys you're going to be around for four to five years. And um, that's the team that when you get your chance to be a senior, that's a team that, you're, you know, you're going to push into the fourth gear. And this, you know, this is where you lay your life on the line for those guys. Um, and I couldn't think about it like a, a bunch of better guys that I'd play for. You know, they're great dudes. They're humble dudes. Um, there's all around great, great guys. Do you know who you're going to live with at, at K-State as far as the players go? Yeah. Um, yeah, so when I get up there in January, I'll be with Rubley, Devontae, and Austin Weiner. Cool. That'll be a lot of fun, man. Um, last thing I got for you um, before we let you go, what is it that you really do want to accomplish um, by the time you're set to graduate? You know, do you have a personal goal, uh, a team goal? What, what might that entail? Um, I think personal goals for me is, of course, first and foremost, to get an education there, you know, finish up with one or one or more degrees. Um, I think academics come first for me. You know, it's a huge part of why I chose Kansas State. You know, they have a great academic, uh, you know, facilities. And, uh, you know, their second biggest alumni program is in Denver, uh, which is huge for me. Um, that was another huge point. Um, 
But team wise and football wise, um, my biggest thing is you know you got to start small and work your way up. Um, if you just have a goal, you want to win a national championship. It was like, well, what's going to come before that? So my f- biggest thing there is just to win games. Um, and that will lead to, you know, conference championship and then a national championship. Um, my biggest thing is I want to bring a, con- a conference championship to Kansas State. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not for sure when the last time that was, but I think maybe when Coach Klein was there. But I think that's the biggest thing that we kind of have in mind for our classes, you know, just to win that, you know, uh, you know, win that conference championship. And they saw how close Kansas State was to making that conference championship game this year. And just to see what the young guys and what they've done, I think that's a huge, uh, huge goal for us and the team going forward. Um, and just, you know, all around, just make make life friends for life, you know. Um, just be a part of a brotherhood that's going to, you know, be lifelong. Um, and to especially enjoy, enjoy my time there. You know, I've heard from everybody that college is going to be the best four years of your life. Um, and I want to soak that in each day and each minute there. Um, and because for me, I'm excited to, you know, go venture off to a new, new part of the, the, the world um, and kind of set my, set my stone there and set up my future there. Let's make it one final question here. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned it. What's your, what's your kind of career goal outside of football? And do you have a major picked out at K-State yet? I do. I want to be around the business or sports management somewhere in there. Um, my lifelong goal, of course, if NFL doesn't work out, you know, injury, don't make it. Um, I want to stay around the game of football as long as I can, if that's coaching or being a sports agent or just, you know, somewhere in the, you know, marketing team of a football team or just around football in general. Um, just because I've been so grateful what this game's, uh, you know, been able to give me. Um, so I kind of want to give back. Um, that's kind of my biggest thing. Um, even that's, you know, just being a high school coach, you know, a youth coach, um, just kind of my working my way up to that college coaching or even NFL coaching career. You know, it's kind of my biggest goal um, at the end of the day. Uh, but at the end, I just want to be the best person I can possibly be. You know, at the end of the day, if I'm happy doing whatever I'm doing, then I'm living my best life because – my dad said at a young age, if you're working hard and you're not loving your job, it's it's just going to lead to, you know, a sad life. Um, that's what I I don't want to happen. So if, if I'm getting paid a little money, but I'm enjoying my life, then, hey, you know, I'm happy at the end of the day. And I think Kansas State, you know, has better expectation than that. But I, I'm excited to, you know, be a part of the Wildcat Nation. All right, Braden Wood, thank you so much. For taking time with us, we'll go ahead and send it back out to Ryan Wallace. Pleasure to be joined now by offensive line commitment and signee Andrew Lang gang. Uh, first off, let's start right there with the name. For all the fans out there that, that might think it be, might be pronounced another way, let's hear it from you, Andrew. Is it, it is Lane gang, correct? Correct, Lane gang. All right, there it is. Um, well, let's start with your high school season and your career real quick, Andrew. 23-0, and if I'm not mistaken, as an upperclassman, North Dakota 3A Senior Athlete of the Year. Is there anything that, that you didn't accomplish um, that, that sort of eats at you, or are you pretty satisfied? You know, I just feel like being part of that Century Football program was an unbelievable experience. I feel like I had a great support staff around me there, great coaches, great teammates who pushed me to be the best person and best player I could be every day, and I'm just so grateful to have all those guys in my life and to get me to this point. Nationally televised game right out of the gate for you. Um, describe what that was like just kind of in the school and around town, how, how cool that was. Oh, it was really cool. I was hearing that ESPN was coming to North Dakota to broadcast a football game. It was really awesome. I feel like it was a unique opportunity for the state of North Dakota itself, and it was just so awesome to be able to be a part of something like that. And I would imagine you had family, friends, K-State fans were obviously able to watch you. Um, was your social media kind of on fire after that game? Yeah, a little bit. I know I know a lot of people reached out. Was, like I said, it was just an awesome experience just being able to be a part of something like that. Uh, you said before in, in an interview that um, there's no better feeling than taking someone across from you to their breaking point. Uh, has there ever been a player that you haven't been able to break? You know, do you ever think you will come to against an opponent that you won't feel confident you can break them down? You know what? I've played against some great players here in North Dakota, and I know there's definitely going to be a challenge once I get to K-State and get to the Big 12. It's definitely going to be a challenge, and, you know, I'm just looking forward to that challenge. It's getting better every day, 
just keeping my head down, going to work. And it's something I'm looking forward to and just priding myself on that hard work and just being able to do something like that. Reminds me, there was a quote, I think, of Brian Dawkins back on the Eagles where he used to tell people he would take people's souls. And <laughs> that, that kind of reminded me of that. Um, in, in your mind, and, and you're obviously very humble, um, but, but for a second, maybe step out of that for a moment, because in, in your mind, who is the greatest football recruit to ever come out of the state of North Dakota? And, and are you ready to admit, at least from a recruiting standpoint, that you should be in that conversation? Honestly, North Dakota, they've had some great football players here. I know Carson Wentz, I went to high school with Carson, and he ended up going to NDSU. Carmen McGovern, who went to Missouri and went to the New York Jets, there's a lot of great players. And I'm just so, honestly, humbled to be a part of that group like that. And I'm just happy to be at the point where I am. And honestly, the recruiting cycle, it's so awesome. But for me, I understand that it's all going to just take when I get there and just being able to take – all of my everything I have and get to that point, get on campus. And like I said, it's just time to get to work. I feel like the recruiting process, it's an unbelievable experience being able to talk to some great universities, but it's all business at the end of the day. And that's just kind of how I go about things. Your high school coach, Coach Wingenbach, told uh, our Adam Suderman um, in an interview earlier this fall that you were 6'3", 190 as a freshman. Did you ever kind of see yourself – being in this spot in this sport um, four years ago? You know, I've always loved football from all the way, peewee football all the way up. And as a freshman, like you said, I was about 6'3", 190. And that summer, I know there was an opportunity that I could start at offensive guard or somewhere on the old line. And I really pushed myself, worked hard. I got up to 225 my sophomore year. And from there, I just knew like football was my thing. I, I enjoyed the physical nature of the game. And just from there on, I just pride myself on doing the little things right you know what like eating right sleeping right and then just doing things in the weight room that will get me to the best point where I can be being kind of a lighter o-lineman in those early years did it force you to kind of become a little bit more technically savvy um and, and do you feel like that helped once you got the weight on later in your high school career I definitely say so I know I've always feel like I've been a pretty assignment strong offensive lineman at Century, and I credit a lot of that to my coaches putting me in that position and just kind of knowing that hand placement, what I'm doing, using some of those mental IQs. And then once I started putting up, putting on that weight and putting on that strength, it just felt like everything came together, you know. I'm glad you brought up the, the sleep and the nutrition part of it, you know, because, uh, again, you know, we've talked to a bunch of people throughout the course of your recruitment just to kind of get a better idea of who you are as a, as a player and a person. And Coach Weiss at, at Sanford Power, and I think he does some stuff with Century as well, he had mentioned that you're big on details about sleep and nutrition. Um, share us with us a little bit more about, you know, those details of things like what went into your nutrition this off season. When you talk about sleep, what are you, what are you exactly getting at there? And, and how'd you get up to 275? You know, what? I just feel like coach wise does an awesome job with the century program and at Sanford power. I know he preaches what to do. Right. And I thank him for everything he's done for me. And I know this summer I would have um, a big breakfast. I love making breakfast, making about four eggs, two pieces of toast, and then some sort of protein in there, protein shake. And then from there, I just snack throughout the day, PB and J's, stuff like that. And then lunch, dinner, and just eating the right stuff. Cause it's what you put inside your body that really like, you know, what helps you. And it, a lot of people take that for granted. And that's how you kind of grow. Not only like physically but it's just how you grow and I know sleep why sleep is so important I worked out at 6 a.m every morning throughout the summers and I know I made sure I wanted to get to bed at least by 10 at least eight hours of sleep is something that I would always try to focus on 9 30 10 and like I said coach wise has done an awesome job just reiterating those details for us and helping us get to the point that we've been where are you at now as far as height and weight go? I'm with the fro, I'd probably say I'm about six, seven, but honestly, right now, I'd, I'd say without shoes, without, without everything, I'd probably about six, five. And then right now, I'm about 275, 280. And for me, I know the weight, I just feel like I want to go in, into K State feeling explosive, you know, 
you know, being able to move well, move explosively, and then being able to bend. Because I know once I get there, they'll be able to do put put some weight on me and do it the right way. So. And you mentioned the hair before we started recording. You describe it as a Jackie Moon. Is there yeah. other? Are there yeah. other kind of? Are there other taglines that that maybe your friends and teammates have tagged it? Uh, I I know. Jackie Moon, something that always comes up. It'd be a pretty funny Halloween costume. But the for all this is, I had an afro my eighth grade year, and I said the only time I'm going to bring it back out is my senior year of football, and now it's back. And we had a little hair contest, me, um, Bryant, and then some of the recruits. And right now I think the fro is doing pretty well. Yes, uh, you, you've got Coach Bratt beat in that one. Speaking <laughs> of the coaches real quick, um, when, when did you remember your first kind of meeting with Coach Riley and Coach Kleiman, and, and what stood out about that first time you got to, to talk with them? Actually, so Coach Riley, he, I think, I, I want to say I was a freshman, and there was a offensive line camp or line scrimmage camp at VCSU, Valley City in North Dakota, and Coach Riley was obviously at NDSU, and he came to um, that camp for one day and just kind of worked with some of the old linemen, worked some drills, and I just remember he he just got got on you well, and I just enjoyed someone like that, just coaching in his style and being able to talk to those guys. I'm so excited to play for guys like that and the staff as a whole. I'm really just looking forward to playing for those guys. Is there a conversation that you had, or or was there a moment that you had um, in considering K State that you felt was the linchpin? as far as them winning over your recruitment where you said, you know, you came home, looked at your parents or whatever and said, that's it. That's where I want to be. Honestly, throughout the whole recruiting process, there's always a gut feeling like Manhattan might be the place where I'm going to succeed for these next four or five years. And it was always that gut, gut instinct throughout the process. I continue to have my options open. And once it got down to deciding, I just kind of felt like Kansas state would be a great home for me for the next four or five years. You can play just about anywhere on the offensive line. Um, has Coach Riley talked about a specific spot? Do you have a specific spot where if, if you had it your way, a, a, a position that you would like to start with at least? You, Coach Riley, I know, has told me play a little swing, so a little guard and tackle. And for me, I've literally I played everywhere on our century old line besides center. And even in the summers when our skill guys are running routes and throwing a little bit, I'll – mess around a little bit and do some center snaps and work on that a little bit. But honestly, I just want to be as versatile as I can and just being able to fill some of those holes and just get there to the point where I know those different positions. Cause if I know some of those different positions, I feel like it'll just help me understand the offense better schemes. And I'm just so excited for the opportunities ahead. One more thing I wanted to ask you just about being a lineman youngest of, if I'm not mistaken, you have two older brothers. Yep. Did that help toughen you up? I mean, is that why you are the way you are when you kind of get in the trenches? I'd say so. I know my brothers, they, being the youngest brother, it's a little tough, especially in those early years. But I just think my parents, my brothers, they've done such, such a good job kind of guiding me throughout this process. And honestly, I enjoy being an offensive lineman. I feel like it's a job where a lot of people might say, eh, but for me, I just feel like I have that team – team first attitude and that's that's the one thing I want to do is win games and I'll do whatever I can to do to help contribute to our team success. What sort of individual kind of outlook do you have for yourself um, or is there an expectation kind of a bar that coach Riley has has kind of set for you in some of your latest conversations? I know coach Riley and I have talked about a little bit just getting there just doing the little things right and Honestly, if I can maybe play you know, a few games before my retro gets up, that'd be awesome. That's, that's a goal of mine, and to get in some of those games, I feel like that'd be really cool. But I know first and foremost, I just want to get in there, get in the system, the weights, the nutrition, and start doing the things and just work hard and see, see where it takes me. Have you bonded with anybody in this class? Is, is there kind of a guy that you talk with more than, more than another? Yeah, I, I know – I have a lot of good buds from the class. I know we have a group chat and then we have fantasy fantasy league that we always mess around with. But I know Austin, uh, other O-line committee, I've been able to grow. Gavin, Devante, uh, B. Wood, a lot of those guys are just some guys I'm looking forward to competing with every day and just some, some people I'm looking forward to just being with. So, 
let's round out the interview with some just some fun stuff. Um, let's talk hobbies for a minute, Andrew. What what do you do when you need a break from football? When you need a break from training? Where where do where do you go? Where does your mind go? Honestly, I know video games. I'll do video games here and there, but in the past past few months, I haven't been big video games. But honestly, hunting and fishing is obviously some something I love enjoy doing and honestly just hanging out with friends is hanging out with friends and family is always something that I enjoy doing. So Tuttle Creek might be a spot that fans could find you off the field in the future. I'd, I'd say so. Yes. <laughs> uh, one other thing that I want to ask you about being from North Dakota, what is cold to you? How, how, how cold does it have to get before you say, okay, I'm cold. That's tough. Cause some of these winters are, <laughs> Made a 50 with windshield. I know I got done with a weights workout at the school. And while I walked out, I got to my car and I noticed my eyebrows were just frozen just from that little sweat. And I was like, wow. And that's something I honestly, it's just North Dakota and you got to do what you got to do. So the good news is I don't think you'll have that problem when you leave the veneer complex. So that's a good thing. Um, Andrew, thank you so much for taking some time to talk recruiting with us. Congratulations um, on officially signing with the K-State Wildcats. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Let's head out now to Hayes, Kansas, where Gavin Hazelhorst is standing by. Gavin, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. We appreciate you taking time with us. Um, but let's get right into it here. What separated K-State from all the other schools in your recruitment process? Um, they were the first Division One school to – to uh, offer me and I think they took a, a really good shot on me and I really appreciate that from them so you're carrying the flag as kind of the top rated um, you know prospect out of Kansas what does that mean to you how do you feel about it and how do you go about um, I would I would say having a target on your back but you're you're one of the top prospects here in the state so how do you go about that um I worked my butt off for it so I'm proud of it but I I'm not cocky about it at all I'm, Still got a lot further to go, so. So talking about having, you know, further to go, um, what does that entail for you? What are you kind of doing in the weight room, in the film room? Um, how are you trying to get better as a football player before you officially head off um, to K-State? Um, basically just bigger, faster, stronger. And then when I get this playbook, I'm going to study my, study my butt off for that too. Um, which coaches would you say you have um, the best relationship with right now and which ones really – um, helped K-State um, get separated from the other schools in your recruitment process? Um, coach Stannard, my linebacker coach, I love him. And uh, Taylor Brett, I've been talking to him a lot. And I feel like I can tell him anything. So We get those answers a lot, especially with Brett. So um, what do you like about him, and, and what does he kind of bring to the table at K-State? Uh, he's a funny person. I love him. <laughs> Do you think we'll see you more on the defensive line at the linebacker position? Have you kind of gotten um, a little feedback as to what they like in your game and, and where you'll play on the field at K-State? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm playing inside linebacker. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, have you been keeping up with the team this season? Obviously, they lost five in a row to, to, to you know finish out the season, but they won their first four conference games and had a lot of big plays in those games. Um, how excited are you, you know, to play for this team, but more importantly, what did you take away from watching them on TV um, this past season? Um, actually, I went to a couple of their games, too, and I loved it there. So, What did you like about it? Just the whole environment. Everybody's a family. You're, um, you're from Hayes, so was it kind of KU, K-State, another school out there that you always rooted for, or was it, were you pretty neutral in that? I was pretty neutral until now. Gotcha. Do you have um, – a favorite, um, someone, someone in your class that you've really kind of connected with at this point in time, um, as far as your signees go, do you know who um, your favorite, you know, potential teammates might be? Um, me and Darrell Jones have been talking a lot. He's one of my really good friends already. So, um, and I'm, I'm going to be rooming with him too. Cool, cool. We, we touched on this a little earlier, but how tough was it with the pandemic to? really try to, you know, progress yourself as a player? Um, it didn't affect me as much as I thought it would. I still figured out different ways to get the grind in. So, Thank you so much for tuning in to Go Power Cats 2020 Signing Day show. Hopefully you enjoyed it. 
Be sure to stay locked in on GoPowerCat.com to stay up to date with each of these 14 new recruits.